So, uh, I recently did something pretty dangerous. I searched for my own name in Reddit. Now, uh, thankfully, nothing too terrible popped up, uh, but I did find an interesting post from about a year ago where someone had asked about uh, contrabassoon quarter tone fingerings, and someone else had responded that uh, maybe they could reach out to me. Uh, unfortunately, it's probably too late to help uh, the person who originally asked, uh, but I did think it would make an interesting topic for a video because I do have some contrabassoon quarter tone fingerings. Um, before I get into the fingerings themselves, though, I want to talk about uh, a few caveats. Uh, first of all, there's the big uh, caveat that applies to pretty much any contrabassoon fingerings, and that is that the instruments are fairly inconsistent. Uh, amongst themselves. So if you've downloaded my contrabassoon fingering chart, uh, you'll you'll see it it specifically says this is not the one true fingering chart. These are ideas uh, based on my own experience that may help you develop fingerings for your particular instrument. So obviously that's going to apply more so to quarter tone fingering. The second big caveat uh, involves quarter tones uh, on any of the modern woodwind instruments. Um, the, the best analogy I could think of would be that playing uh, quarter tones on uh, a modern contrabassoon or bassoon or flute or clarinet or saxophone is a bit like trying to play a complex um, chromatic passage on uh, an instrument like this. This is a, a kirtal. Uh, it's a mostly diatonic instrument. It doesn't have separate tone holes for each uh, chromatic step. So to play the chromatics, you have to use uh, cross fingerings. Um, and that's true for uh, on modern woodwinds when it comes to quarter tones. Modern woodwinds uh, are not built with quarter tones in mind. They don't have separate tone holes for quarter tones. So this is gonna create uh, a lot of deficiencies uh, in uh, quarter tones on woodwinds that uh, composers and performers need to be aware of when considering whether or not it's a good idea to write uh, or play these at all. These deficiencies will include uh, poor intonation, uh, since we're relying on accidental fingerings uh, that were not uh, intended by the manufacturer, uh, things, things aren't going to be perfectly in tune. Some notes will require more humoring than others uh, to bring into tune, and other notes are probably realistically just not going to be in tune. Um, the uh, second deficiency to look out for is clumsy technique. Uh, once again, we're relying on accidental fingerings, some of which are going to be awkward to transition between, or not only transitioning from one quarter tone fingering to another quarter tone fingering, but transitioning from a, a regular chromatic fingering to a quarter tone fingering. The third big deficiency we're gonna face is inconsistent timbre. Uh, so modern, or the most common variants of the modern orchestral woodwinds are built on the concept of each chromatic pitch in the fundamental register having its own tone hole. Uh, the only real exception to this is E flat three on bassoon, which is played by default as cross fingering. Uh, in contrast on, uh, with quarter tones, everything's gonna be either a cross fingering or an over vented fingering. Uh, and that will cr create some uh, inconsistencies in the, the timbre, which will be noticeable if you were, for example, to play a, a quarter tone scale, uh, where some notes are gonna be uh, more covered or brighter than the surrounding notes. And the fourth big deficiency is that players, uh, at least uh, outside of some uh, from some specialized players, uh, they're not going to be familiar with uh, these fingerings by default, or at least they're much less likely to be. 
Um, so that can make your uh, your piece less accessible if you're requiring players to 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 know quarter tone fingerings. So with those deficiencies in mind, um, uh, I'll go ahead and get started with the, the fingerings themselves. Uh, there is a link to a PDF um, in the uh, in the description below, which should be more accessible. But I'll have the fingerings over over on this side as I go. And I'm going to start with a uh, low F, and then go up from there, and then go to go back to the uh, the the lowest notes at the beginning because there's some some. Uh, additional concerns to be aware of down in that lowest register. Now the only fingering for uh, E half flat four that I found is uh, very difficult to articulate from, so I'm going to slur to it from uh, D half sharp four. And it's also sharp and sounds terrible. somehow even sounds worse. Now, um, I would personally consider low F the lower limit for semi-reasonable contrabassoon quarter tones. Uh, as inflexible as the rest of the instrument is, uh, with it, when it comes to quarter tones, it's even worse down here. Uh, not only because of the uh, extraordinary length, but because so many of the keys are coupled together. 
So, for example, I can't, uh, uh, if I play, uh, press the low C key, it automatically closes the low D key. If I press the low B key, it automatically closes the low C and low D keys. This makes it very difficult to do any sort of cross fingerings uh, down here. So a lot of these fingerings require um, uh, half depressing a key. So finding uh, the a knife's edge where the key is just open enough for the notes to speak or just depressed enough for the note to speak but is suitably uh, sharp or flat from what what the key normally does to function as a quarter tone. Uh, in, uh, in these fingerings, the keys that are half depressed will be in green, and it'll, it'll be a very finicky um, uh, adjustment to find just that right amount. If you're a player and you're having to play these notes, you have my sympathies. If you're a composer, uh, deciding whether or not to write down here, I would strongly suggest to limit it to uh, F, uh, low F or above. Anyway, uh, I hope that was helpful to at least some of you. Uh, and if you're the original post person who posted that uh, Reddit post, um, I, I don't want to share your name in case uh, you'd prefer to be anonymous. Um, sorry it's a year late, but, you know, better late than never, maybe. Have a great day.